Today we're still working on the Sioux War Chief from Old Guard Miniatures. Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here, next level painting, hitting you up on the literal best of all days. Coming to you live from the Beats Lab in Hollywood, California, we're doing it again. Today, we're still working on the old guard miniature Sioux War Chief from New Hope, Pennsylvania. A lot of backstory on this model, I'll let you guys get caught up in all these videos. First, we showed you how secretly easy leather was. Then we showed you how to do the feathers. Today, we're gonna keep it busy in the Beats Lab. We're gonna be doing the bone armor, but we're gonna be doing some glaze technique, some wash technique, and some dry brush technique. What's interesting about this project, if you've been following along, is we are approaching it from that historical style, that mindset. We're not going crazy, we're not doing the super contrast style, we're not going comic book on it, we're trying to stay more weathered, more muted. If you guys don't mind, I'm gonna take a quick second to shout out a couple of clutch individuals over on Patreon. Dylan, Peter, Philip, Sean, Mark, and Jose, thank you guys. I cannot do it without you. Patreon is my personal crowdfunding page. It's how I keep the lights on. All right, here he is, guys. The Sioux War Chief looking his best old guard miniatures all day, every day. Here's what we've done so far. And right now we're gonna start in on that bone recipe I promised. This is a little Menoth highlight and a little of that mediocre from P3. We're just gonna mix them together. Now my trick with my bones is I like to introduce a little yellow to them. And mediocre obviously is an ochre. You can do this with practically any bone and any yellow, but I do prefer the heavier pigments of the P3s for when I'm doing stuff like this. Now, simple. Couple light coats. It ain't news, you guys have heard this before. So this is our new yellowy bone mix we just made. And we're gonna do several light coats. Very thin here, glaze style. The reason, I mean, Obviously, you should just do that anyway. It's very important on a model like this. This is an OG 1970s hand sculpted model. The details are very subtle, but there are many of them. So you gotta come in there with the thinnest coats possible. Or else you're just gonna clog up those details and then you're gonna hate the fucking model. So we're gonna use a little bit of that mediocre on the rope hood and the spear tip on the shaft. I don't know what, I'm not a spear scientist. Gonna hit his sweet pocket watch chains under his bone armor. Just gonna get it all set up, let it dry, come in for round two. Add a little bit more of the Menoth white highlight. A little bit less of the yellow. Just work your way up. So there's gonna be a nice patina, a nice staining effect here, a nice agedness to this bone. It is crucial that the white of his bone armor is a different white than the white of his feathers. That is what we're going for here. So the weathers, the feathers, are a bit in the cool spectrum, whereas this chest armor is gonna be in the warm spectrum. We're going for a little bit off-white on both of them. Nothing's gonna be pure white here. Things are gonna be weathered and antiqued. Later, we might come up with some more aggressive highlighting on those feathers, but our goal is to get this miniature to that historical style, every little piece built up. All right, looking pretty good. Several thin coats. Let's bang out that little center strip. What we're going to be doing here is going off the box art. I've done a few Google searches and I recognize that the box art is very accurate. I think when the box art for something like this came out back in the day, they had encyclopedias and shit. So the research looks solid. All right, we're going to use a little mild brown. This is a army painter, quick shade. Greatest washes in the business. We're going to throw a little light tone in there. Light tone's got a bit of an amber hue to it. We're going to slap that together, mix it up. Create the gangster gumbo light. Add a little quick shade, mixing medium. This shit is liquid gold. This basically allows you to control how thick or thin this wash is without losing any of its color, without any weird staining. You will never get stains. So we're gonna do a very light dapple here, a little, just maximum coverage. We wanna stain it. We want this wash to find its way in between those pieces of bone. Now we're, we're gonna be erring on the side of caution here. The lightest possible coats, multiple coats if necessary. We're gonna hold the model in the right position for the dry time. We're gonna let it all just stain it. And then we're gonna let it dry. Then we're gonna do it again. 
that simple. So now we're taking a look here at our box art while it's drying. We're just getting a good, you know, feel for it. Seeing the little bead designs inside of his sweet bow tie. All right. Strong Tone is probably the thing that got Army Painter famous back in the day. This is their wash version. And we're going to add a little Strong Tone to the mix because I want a little bit more aggressive gangsterness right here. So now roll up in there. Make it happen on this spear first. This is kind of like our test bed. We're like, mm, how does this look? Let's just throw it on the spear and make sure it's not garbage. Cool. We like it. Looks good. Stone tip spear. I can't wait to get into that stone. Now here we go. Another very thin coat. We're just exploratory. We're just teasing it. We're not sure yet. We haven't decided. Are we all in? I don't know. Oh, just Let's just tease it again. All right, fuck it. Let's go. So now we're going to just make sure to get it inside the lines of that bone. Try to bring some of that definition out. Like I said, it's a hand sculpted model from over 30, fuck, 40, 50 years ago. What am I talking about? That shit's this, <laughs> like, holy shit, right? This model is old. All right, check it out. We got some game color earth and a little bit more of a mediocre these are the colors we use to help excite the leather in the first video now while we're letting all the washes dry i'm a proponent of staying busy in the beat slab so what we're going to do right here is just do some glaze technique what we have done is we've thinned out a little of that earth tone and a little bit of that mediocre together into a, a very thin coat you see it on my glove right there it is so thin it's insane we're going to just start focusing on some of the, the ridges, trying to maximize the contrast here. We're going to stain up some of that leather to make it look its best, create some subtle highlights. The reason we're working this thin, though, is it keeps those transitions indistinguishable. You won't be able to see those hard edge lines like that I'm known for with my comic book style of contrast. We're trying to create contrast in a very natural way. So you definitely want to thin those paints down into this glaze. It's basically dirty paint water. And we're going to put it on all those little raised areas where all those folds are, where the light might hit them. We're going to stain it up a little bit on his crotch robe region here. Now, the cool thing is the wash that's settled in all the crevices is telling us what to do. It's revealing to us the story, pay by numbers. We're going to just trace here. That's it. We're going to trace it. We're going to let it dry. We're going to trace it again. Maybe call it a day after the second time. I don't know. So here we go, we're just following that big crease in the front of his pants where the light might hit it. It's instantaneously more interesting now. It's giving you that spotted leather effect because like it's, you know, the leather might not be all one perfect sheet of leather with, you know, one tone like modern day leather. This was handmade. I don't know the process. I mean, tanning, I guess. I played Skyrim. Looking good here. Just gonna like take our time. Be patient, be methodical is the best piece of advice. It's drying up on his right arm now. We're gonna go for, for round two, basically. We're using the Slow Fuse Gaming.com uh, Sable Hair Brushes. These are amazing brushes for glaze technique. I prefer them over all of their Sable Hair Brushes. Kalinsky, it's Kalinsky Sables. I use that synthetic brush when I'm doing them hard edges, but I love these for this process. Looking good, getting some nice solid definition while staying subtle on that muted scale. Finding those folds, keeping the wash in the crevices, giving us some nice aged look here. Some, not, you know, just natural. Love it. All right. Couple more strokes. Hit that cuff. You know, you always got to hit the cuffs. Hit them folds. Trace them. Some areas you just have to use a little bit of artistic license we don't know what light really does you know like <laughs> where does it go when i close my eyes i don't even know but there it is just dropping a couple of random stains off trying to get it nice and patchy i'm looking at the cover art at what this artist did in the 70s who painted it the first time and i'm trying to emulate some of the effects he did because i like them there we go Dropping off a couple more highlights on the pants. All right, Menoth highlight again. Let's jump back into it, P3 style. Okay, dry brush. Have you guys heard of dry brushing? Well, here it is. I'm using the shittiest brush I own, a GW brush. 
and I'm basically just going from top to bottom with some of this Menoth white on there, but very dried off. I dried it off on my t-shirt. Round two, and you see how we're building up a very natural bone effect. We're getting a nice weathered appearance. We're getting the staining in between the individual slots of the armor. We've got a nice variety of subtle colors and transitions. Now we're gonna just frame it out. I'm looking at the cover art and I notice that this border, this perimeter that's holding his bone armor and his sweet ass tie and his pocket watch chains in place is black. So we just pulled out first black that I can see. I think it's Vallejo Air Black. We're just gonna trim it out with our synthetic brush, our skinny little 18-0, uh, fuck man. What, what are they called? The, the official paintbrush and next level painting? Low Cornell's or La Quinta's. They, this is not the discontinued one. This is this this is the long haired one. This is called the liner. Now we switch to sanguine red base. And we're dropping a few lines on his sweet bow tie here. I'm looking at the box art. And this is exactly what they use. They use a red here, another black, and a little bit of blue. And like I said, I confirmed it, I Googled it, made sure the colors were accurate, and I was able to find war bonnets and other attire that were in these colors. So I was like, all right, let's do this thing. Framing out some more black using our spotter brush. This brush, FYI, is like $3. Love this fucking brush. Little exile blue from the P3 line. We're gonna use this because apparently these sweet neckerchiefs that they have, uh, looks like the tassels are blue. So I'm with it. I'm with this guy's style. He doesn't fucking play games. I mean, I wish he had a little green, but maybe... I don't know what they dyed their clothes with back in those days. Maybe green was more difficult. Because I'm feeling like everything that's blue could be green. The fist on red. We're going to highlight some of that red base that we did earlier. Because it is actually a little brighter. They kept it bright. Boom, there it is. Just a nice skinny line. Only a little bit of water here. That's the problem when you're doing these these hard details. You know, you can't can't go too thin because then it'll just, you know, spread out on you. And that's also why I use synthetics because they don't spread out as much. So synthetics for this process, we're going to use uh, verdigris blue. It's a little bit of a highlight color. And we're going to just work that neckerchief in. It looks like a piece of bone with two cords of leather going through it that look like they were dyed blue. There's a lot of details on this model. We're gonna switch back to mild brown, which is a wash from earlier. And we're gonna wash that whole little section inside of it very subtly. We wanna bring it all to the same tone, the same weathered appearance that the rest of the bone armor is at. So this is gonna find the definition in there, all the little beads in there. It's gonna help pop them out. Too easy. Love it. We already we did switch back to a sable hairbrush for that process. Now we're back to our synthetic brush and we pulled out some of that mediocre and we did thin it down a little bit and we're gonna just create a nice fun little transition with a little glaze technique on the top and bottom of his sweet ass tie. I call it a tie but I think it's the thing that's holding his bones together. See we're just giving it a nice little, I don't even know what kind of highlight this is, from the top down and then from the bottom up. Just something interesting and it's gonna dry looking interesting. And we did it so thin that you can still see the wash inside all those beads. I'm very happy with it. Like I said, it's a lot of detail. This model is from the 70s, hand sculpted. The details are subtle. They're not super aggressive, but there are a shitload of details. They did not play games. And actually, I can call out that artist right now. I mean, I, I don't know if he's still alive, but if you're out there, Andrew Chernak, great job, homie. 